of the music. First of all, you want to make sure you have clean copies of all of your music, not the ones that you've been working on in your lessons that have a lot of notes on them and might be distracting for the pianist. You also want to make sure that the holes are adequately punched, but that they have not worn thin yet, so that when your pianist flips the page in your audition that your music doesn't go flying off the piano, leaving you singing a cappella. Then let's talk about actually notating your music. So usually when you come into an audition, you might have 10 to 20 seconds to communicate with your pianist about tempi, maybe sing the first little bit of your aria. But it's also helpful if you have direct notes in the music that are clear so that they can do their best job for you, which they want to. So here you will see in this piece, Noreen's aria, that I have a cut here. So I don't have the whole first introduction played because that's kind of a lot of time during a short audition. So I have the beginning of the cut marked clearly here. You can also just write start here. And then later on in the piece, I do a traditional cut for this aria. So that instead of having two full choruses, I just have one. So I make sure to clearly mark that as well, Xing out the parts that I am not using clearly notating where this cut is, where it starts, and where it finishes. You want to make sure that there is at least amount of information on here, so only the pieces that you really need for the pianist, so that it's not overly marked. And then here you can see that I've X'd out an ending that I don't use in lieu of the traditional ending here. So those are some tips about how to actually prepare your music. Again, you want to make sure that you have clean copies, that the holes are easily punched and that they are not worn through so the music won't fall off, that your music is clearly labeled. Some singers even have an index in the beginning of the binder if they have perhaps more than five or six arias, and then they have each one labeled so the pianist can find your music easily that way. If you are auditioning with a headshot or a resume that you're not giving to the panel or extras, that can be here as well. So you just want to make sure it's not too busy and not too full. That's very easy for you to follow, for your pianist to follow. Great. So let's talk about how to communicate with the pianist in an audition setting. Dan, would you mind joining us? Sure. All right. So you've just entered the stage or the rehearsal hall or the small audition room where you're auditioning. And let's pretend that uh, Dan and I have not met, right? So we want to make sure that right away we establish a positive collaborative relationship so we have our most successful outing here in this audition. So we're going to pretend I've already walked over here with my binder and I'm just going to say, good morning Dan. Good morning. I place my music here and I say, I would like to start here. Okay. And then I have another cut, traditional cut here second chorus. Okay. And I do not take this ending. I'm going to take the regular ending here. Okay, got it. And my tempo is a little bit faster than some. Um, so okay. a little bit like this. Quel guardo il cavaliere. So it's never a bad idea to just sing a short snippet of your piece 
to communicate your tempo to the pianist. Oftentimes, you're singing traditional repertoire, they'll be really familiar with the piece. And if you sing it a little too fast because you're nervous, then you can just try to pull it back once you're singing. But it's a nice way to um, re respect your pianist in that everyone sings a little bit differently. So it's a good idea to just sing a short snippet, and then you say thank you, and you walk to the crook of the piano, take a good breath when you're ready. You guys have fun. Rejoice, 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 rejoice,